Hi, ladies. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for honoring the invitation and coming to be a part of us. You're very welcome to this afternoon, this evening's discussion. Um, we'll start with honoring God because he's the one who has made us this far. So let us pray together. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much. For it is such an honor to come into your presence once again, sharing on things that you have enabled us to um, appreciate on our own, but then share them with the world. I pray that this meeting shall be nice and shall be um, encouraging to the ladies and shall be an opportunity for us to become better people, better versions of ourselves better planners and better stewards of the health that you've given us. I pray for the speaker. I pray for the ladies attending. I pray that everything will work out to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed, amen. So welcome ladies. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm sure that some people are held up. Please send your friend a message, a reminder. You know, people get, uh, we, our lives are busy, we all get carried away. But um, please remind someone, invite them to come to the Women Thrive series. And we are very honored to have you here, ladies. So, my name is Lillian Kalisa. Ah, no, before I do that, I will ask us. To keep our microphones muted, it's distractive when they sit back. Please keep checking and make sure that your your microphone is muted. Okay, just give me a moment. Just a moment, ladies. Perfect. I've shared the link in the chat. Um, if you can, you can use that to share with other ladies. I hope I got it right. For them to come in, unfortunately, they'll have to register first quickly and then get the link. So welcome, ladies. My name is Lillian Kalisa, Dr. Lillian Kalisa. I am a family physician and um, a mother and a wife. I am um, passionate about the health of women, especially women that have gone through um, loss and trauma. Um, I run an organization called H3, which is Hope Health Healing, which is what we will, we, we will appreciate as we move along. Now, I'm not here simply because I'm a medical doctor. I'm here because of my story. And it's that story that led me to join my friends that is Diana and Fortunate, who are going to introduce themselves. It's that story that enabled me to come and be able to support women redefine their health through an authentic health. So we've run through the series where we started at planning. How do we plan our lives? That was in the month of, of April. In the month of May, we went through how to redefine our health, to do authentic health, holistic health. And if you miss any of these, if you go to our social media platform, the links are there to the repeats of the meetings that we had. So this month we are dealing with health. So without any further ado, I will call upon my colleague, Diana, to introduce herself and then we'll move on. Diana? Thank you. Thank you very much, Lillian. And uh, good evening, ladies. My name is Diana Sekaja Bagarukayo, and I'm a co-founder of an organization called Phenomenal Women. Um, together with Lisa Sekaja, 
we founded this organization and our focus is to mentor and empower women. So we have mentoring sessions for women as well as annual conferences in five different countries around the globe, in Uganda, in Switzerland, in Zimbabwe, in France, uh, and in the USA. Um, I'm joined here with Lillian and Fortunate because we're passionate about supporting women. And our first session that we had um, was to talk about planning and to support women learn how to plan. And that's the session that I led. Um, the second session was led by Lillian, which was on healing, on health, sorry. And today we have a session on healing from Fortunate. So I'm very glad to be here and welcome to everyone. Over to you, Fortunate, for introduction. Hi, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, you are. OK, so it's so good to be here. Thank you all for joining the call. Uh, like uh, I've been introduced, my name is Fortunate Ngavir, but we, before you go into the details of being, me introducing myself, I wanted you guys on the call to kindly just tell us one thing you're grateful for today. Just feel free to type it into the chat room as I go ahead with my introduction. So as you will notice on the flyers, my name has an initial at the end, which is firm. So I like to say that I am fabulous, ingenious, resilient, and motivated, hence the word firm. So again, before I continue with my introduction, I want you to find one word that describes you from your name. So I'm a firstborn of nine biological siblings from both my maternal and paternal families with very many other sisters and brothers, including uh, Dr. Lilian and Dana here, who are my sisters for purposes of this uh, women wellness series. I'm a mentor with Girls for Girls. I'm a friend and I'm a sister to many. I'm a wife to one husband and a mother of two girls. Professionally, I'm a lawyer and a mental health enthusiast. I'm passionate about girl and women mentorship. And my vision is to grow and serve in God's purpose for my life. But most importantly, I believe that in every life experience, be it adversity, therein lies an opportunity for us to grow, an opportunity for us to redefine our past for a more fulfilling present. And this is part of what encompasses healing. And it is part of that that I'll be discussing today. I don't know, uh, Dan and Lillian, do I continue with a session now or is there something in between? Kindly confirm, I might go ahead of myself. Unfortunately, I think you can go on. Um, there are a few shares, maybe I can say. Um, there are a few shares of people grateful for life, grateful for um, their families, grateful for the opportunity to be alive and healthy. Yeah, as the list goes on, so there are many shares in there. Someone is grateful for what God has done for her. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. For now, as you will see here, again, I refer to the initials firm. I'm waiting for all you ladies to share one word that describes you from your name, from one of your name initials, just one. The way I have said I'm fabulous, I'm ingenious, I'm resilient and I'm motivated. But my names are fortunate in Gabriel. Valinda is my family name and Mugara is my husband's name. So kindly feel free to share. Okay, so I will now continue. I want this uh, session to be as interactive as it can possibly be. So I will keep interjecting. So feel free to respond um, and sh continue to share in the chat room. I see Carol says she's come Carol. That's nice. Okay, 
So I see, I believe all of you can see the screen and you're probably seeing a very beautiful girl. Now, you must be wondering who this random girl is and why I'm speaking to you. But don't let the picture that you're looking at on the screen fool you because um, thanks to makeup and uh, the facade we all carry every so often, we get to choose what we show the world, yeah? But sometimes behind the beautiful face, the beautiful made up face, sometimes there's something deeper. And I think if you, if you were keen at the beginning, you heard Lillian share that part of the reason she's with us here, it's because of her story. Now, if you attended the last session on authentic health, I believe you remember what her story is. And each one of us has a story. And behind that story, sometimes there's a bit of pain, there's some trauma, and it takes courage and patience to heal. And fortunate farm that you're seeing on the screen, like you, is a, a young lady. I don't know if I'm young. Yes, I'm young. In a pursuit of a personal growth, purpose, and healing. I have equally gone through several experiences. And these experiences, some have been traumatic. Some have been full of pain. And others have been good experiences like everyone else. So I want us to reflect. I'm going to give you a couple of questions for us to ponder on as we go on. And thereafter, I will continue with the presentation. So, and if you don't relate with any of the questions, do not worry about it. If you relate with them, just continue to reflect about them. No pressure. Uh, so one, how many of us here were raised by guardians or good Samaritans that are not our biological parents? For those of us who were raised by our parents, what kind of relationships did we have with each of our parents and siblings? How many of us were born out of wedlock or have children out of wedlock? Moses, if you could kindly mute. Sorry about that. How many of us have experienced loss? How many of us have been disappointed by people we love? How many of us have experienced a financial hardship? a loss of a job, business, or actually undergoing debt, or have experienced debt before. How many of us have at any time felt insecure, rejected, abandoned, or felt like they don't belong? How many of us have been ashamed because of our body types and skin color? Either we are too small or too big or not caviar enough, we are too dark or too light. How many of us probably been second guess attending this session today because you are not sure if it will speak to you or it won't speak to you? If you want, if you by any chance relate with any of the questions and us to figure out how these experiences have shaped our attitudes and basically how we respond to life daily. When you look at this picture again, if you do not know Fortunate, you will, you cannot imagine that behind that smile, there's been any pain, there's been any trauma, or there's been anything that needs to be healed. It's until she says that something has happened to her, that she realized that actually, wow, I can't believe, and you're still smiling. So I want us to reflect. Now, I'm going to quickly go through the other slides, but then also, as we continue, I want us to know that for healing, we need to first find out what happened to us, because you cannot heal from what you don't know. 
I hope I'm making sense. I would appreciate some chat, some comments in the chat room so that I know that I'm speaking to people. So kindly, if you relate with anything, if there's something that you can respond to, kindly go ahead. Now, as a woman, uh, Lilian, Diana or Lilian, if you can first go to the slide on healing, please, before we go there. But then, as a woman, generally, we believe we are super women. We are super planners. We are the naturals and homemakers. But sometimes things do not go the way we've planned them. So the question then becomes, how do we recover from these pitfalls, the past failures, the traumas and the pains? And how do we gradually begin to heal these pains, thrive amidst the pain and start over? Or live in growth. So basically you heal as you go. So Dana or Lillian, kindly if you could go on the slide that talks about what healing is and what we heal from. Okay, so what do we seek to heal from? It could be rejection, it could be childhood trauma, it could be loss of a loved one or a job. Some of these I had already indicated at the beginning of the presentation. It could be shame, it could be depression, brokenness, financial struggles or change in status quo, and any form of abuse by whatever nature, domestic violence. When you are a child, you are sexually abused. All those things are things that affect you as a person that you need to heal from. Now, I'll not go into details, but probably at a certain point, we shall discuss this in more detail. Lillian, if you could go to the next slide, please. So then you must be wondering what healing is. So healing generally is the process of making or becoming sound or healthy again. Now, you only heal after you've experienced something. If, for example, you are sick and you go to the hospital and you are treated, then you recover from the illness. So the same thing with emotional pain, you heal after discovering what it is that you have gone through. So if it has been rejection, if it has been shame, once you put a name to it, then you begin to heal from it and become the best version of yourself, the person that you are meant to be. And uh, there is a quote that for you to begin to heal, you must let the dead leaves drop and be like a tree. And healing looks different for everyone. Uh, Lillian, kindly, let's go to the next slide on uh, the journey to healing. Thank you. So with a journey to healing, you take baby steps. It's not a straight line. It's, um, it, it has so many corners here and there. So one minute you're at this point of I'm healing, then the next point you probably relapse back. Then if you have community around you, the community speaks to you, guides you, counsels you, and takes you back to that process of healing until you are able to move on your own. But it takes baby steps. It's for you to be patient and persistent, for you to set realistic expectations of yourself, to be gentle with yourself. And uh, most importantly, for you to know that healing is a journey. It is not a marathon. You heal a day by day. And I will still just continue to, to share the steps, but uh, like Lillian, I'm going to be able to share my story at the end. Um, Lillian, if you could share the initials for healing, please. Okay, so what does healing look like? One, you must be willing to seek help for you to heal. Once you realize that you're healing, or you're on that journey of healing, you should be able to empathize and encourage others on their healing journey. For those of us who are Christians, I'm sure you have seen or read the Bible, a Bible quote in the a Bible verse rather that says that I'm trying to find it, that says that um, we grow and heal by encouraging others. You have to 
be able to live in community. If I can just kindly give me a minute to find that particular verse. So it says, therefore, this is, uh, it says, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. I will not go into the details because I know not everyone here is a Christian, or if everyone is, I hope you can go and look for that Bible verse. But what I'm trying to say here is that eventually for us to heal, you find community, empathize and encourage each other. Then A for healing stands for acceptance and self-awareness. Now, self-awareness means that you must be able to put a finger to what is happening to you and then also accept that you need help and then go ahead to seek healing. Or if you need to see a therapist, probably go and see a therapist. If you need to see a doctor, go and see a doctor. If you need to speak to a friend, go and speak to a friend, whatever it is. But first you must be able to accept that actually there is something within me that I need to deal with. And that is acceptance and self-awareness. Then you must be willing to learn from others. You must be willing to start over, live, love, listen to your inner voice, let go and let God. I think most one of the most critical things with healing is that we get to a place where you have to surrender, especially for loss. But still, I'll be able to break it down further for you. Then you have to be intentional to stick to this journey. Basically, you must be willing to take whatever step it means for you to take in order for you to heal. And then also... If there are any inner wounds, inner pains that you need to heal, you must be able to understand them and seek to heal them. Then you must be willing equally to stick at your pace. You shouldn't be pressured because, like I said, healing is a journey. It is not a marathon. Sorry about that. So yeah, healing is not a marathon. It is a journey. So you should be willing to take it easy on yourself. So don't be pressurized. Then um, you must be willing to take it gradually. So I am now going to briefly share my story so that you can understand how these initials come into force. In uh, 2013, I lost my grandfather. And um, my granddad had uh, shouldered the burden of taking care of me, paying my bills, my school fees for a long time. Uh, I think from the time I was a little child. So he was my life, literally. And I, I always believed that without him, I wouldn't survive. So after my graduation from uh, Macquarie University, that was in January 2013, I just joined Law Development Center. My grandfather passed away shortly after my graduation. So for a long time, I think I was depressed. I didn't even know I was depressed. But I, I became very, I'm introverted naturally, but I like to col collaborate. But all of a sudden, I was also not interested in social gatherings, I was aloof, as all to myself, but I didn't know what that was. And this continued for a long time. I And then as if that wasn't enough, I failed my course units, about two of them at Law Development Center. And the time he passed away, we were doing our examination at a Law Development Center. And when I requested for permission to do my exams much later, they couldn't allow me. So I went and did my exams when I was mentally unwell. And of course, as expected, okay, not as expected, but well, it happened. I failed the exams. And during my clerkship, I was told that once you lose a year, you'll never be able to recover because your friends have gone ahead of you and you have a lot to catch up with. So now I have lost. I have failure of school, and now I have this burden that my friends are going to go ahead of me and I'll never be able to catch up. So there's a lot on my mind. And well, the administration was offering to review my papers and remark them, it was taking too long. My colleagues were already studying. So I decided to go back 
and sit pre-entry examinations for the second time. Now, if you've heard about pre-entry examinations at the Development Center, passing the first time is no guarantee that you'll pass the second time. So I had that fear still, but I went ahead and did the examinations. And luckily for me, even the second time I passed them, so that means I had to do the entire course of uh, postgraduate, dipl postgraduate diploma in law for the second time. So I went through the course and then after the course, I got a job. After getting that job, while well, I was busy trying to figure out my next life, I was applying for scholarship. The scholarships are not coming through. I do not know by some miracle, I got pregnant with a child. I was not married, remember? So I got married, rather I got pregnant with my firstborn child that was in 2016 around august and this baby was born in uh, 2017 in april that was my firstborn now in that process because we are from a, a staunch catholic family it was more of how can you get pregnant but well here we are now we had to think about marriage and then we start the marriage prep, then eventually we get married. And I get to that place of, oh, I think I'm receiving my healing from my father, my grandfather's loss. Well, I used to call him my father, so hence my father. Now, those moments that were very painful became a bit more, a bit okay, because I mean, I now had someone to concentrate on who was my little girl. So incidentally, what I hadn't mentioned before was that my daughter was born on 6th April, 2017, the same date in 2013 that my grandfather was laid to rest. I don't know if it is some sort of coincidence, but well, that's what happened. So now I get this thing of, oh, wow, I have been healed. My baby girl is here. I'm not overthinking. I'm on my grandfather. I'm now taking care of this girl. So in uh, 2019, October, I learned, about, I learned about Girls for Girls. And because I was raising a girl and I'm very passionate about women and girl empowerment, I'm like, this is my thing. So, well, I go and gender mentorship. Now. Three months after the mentorship in 2020, when everyone was in uh, COVID lockdown, this little girl of mine all of a sudden disappeared. Okay, disappeared. I mean, she changed address and passed away in a very, I really, I, 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 sometimes I don't want to, I, I don't have a way of explaining it because even me, it baffles me. So on this very day, the baby is not feeling well. So the father takes the baby to the hospital. He actually first called me and said, you know what? Ilya has failed to eat anything, so I'm taking her to the hospital. So I mentioned it to my colleague at work. My colleague at work says, you know what? Let them go to Nakasero. I tell my husband, my husband says, no, let's go to his place because it's where we've been going since she was a little baby. So they have her history. So let's keep a track. If need be, we shall move. So he goes to that facility. And as he heads to the facility, I also finish up at work and I join them at around 6 p.m. And once I got there, she was she was okay, but they were preparing to put her on the cannula, to put, yeah, to put the cannula. So they just put the basic thing. So they were waiting as waiting with her. That was at 6 p.m. Then the next thing, they put a dose of epicephine and in a space of two hours, the girl was no more. The doctor just turned and said, I am sorry, I can't find the pulse. So bear with me if I get emotional, but well, yeah, I can't find the pulse. So I was shocked. I, I'm not a movie watcher, so I don't know that once they say there is no pulse, it means the person has died. Like, so I talked to my friend. I'm like, hi, ambulance, what's happening? No, they mean the baby has gone. I'm like, wow. I didn't know what to do. I was stuck. But I was blessed that there was community around me in that moment. I remember it was 25th March. And 
I think on that very day, Museveni had just said lockdown. I think much uh, that very evening after I reached the hospital. And then as soon as they said we can't find the pulse, it also started raining. So I had people come in the rain to be with us. And now the question was much later that God, if this child came to heal me from my past pain and you've taken her, so what next? And the other interesting thing was I had started writing a book on finding healing after losing a loved one. And my focus in that book was my experience after losing my grandfather. So I was, I was stuck. And I remember I'd shared it with uh, an editor and that editor mentioned that this seems, now th this, this is him telling me long after the baby has gone that I feel like this was a premonition. So if I were you, I would actually not finish this book. So I went into a place of reflection for the whole of 2020. Luckily for me, I was working from home. So I had time to be alone, to think, to go through everything I have to go through, put my life back together. Although I can tell you that I'm not fully back there, but it is a journey, like I said. And then until we came back to work, physical office. Now, that one incident literally changed my whole being because like I've told you, my belief was this child has come to heal me from my pain after I, have, after I lost my grandfather. Now, this same child has gone away. So then the question was, so God, who is going to heal me from this? Because I mean, whereas my grandfather was very close to me and was close to my heart, He's not as close as my child because kindly bear with me, bear with me. This, um, my grandfather could not in any way have been close to me as my child was because a child, if, if their mother's here, a child that you have pushed, cannot be as close to the father that gave birth to you, rather the mother, because you know, forgive, my, forgive the language, the father donates or brings forth a portion to your mother that eventually becomes you, and your mother goes ahead and goes through the process of bringing you onto this earth, either by natural birth or either by natural birth or by C-section, whatever um, option works for you, yeah? So now, this is a child that I've given birth to myself, yeah? And this child, I have just been with her for two years and 11 months. I am learning how to love this child. I am learning how to take care of this child. I am learning every single thing that I need to learn to be able to mother her well. She's the reason I am learning or going to, I'm learning how to pray. I am going for mentorship. I am doing it for myself, but even more for her, because I mean, we all know that for a parent, you're a steward, yeah? So as a steward, you need to make sure that you're stewarding the things that have been put into your hands well, yeah? So now, I kept asking myself, I'm supposed to take care of this person. This person has brought me healing from this pain. Now God has decided that, you know what? No, this person has to be with me. Uh, also note that I have this thing, I have learned that, or oh, I keep hearing that, it's not God that takes away our people when we lose them and all that talk. But because I'm here to understand it fully, 
sometimes I'll reference it. So anyway, if that is the case, you ask yourself, so why would this loving God, this God that loves us so much, that knows our every being up to the fiber, why would that, why would this God do this to me? And anyway, I, as I self-reflected, I realized that one, sometimes even things that can be avoided will happen to us. But when they happen to us, it is a lesson for us, probably for us to go ahead and pick the lesson that we have to pick, grow into the season because every everything that happens to us is an opportunity for us to grow. Yeah. Now, if it is an opportunity for us to grow, how do you grow through that season? But even then, how do you grow through that season where well, you are healing from that deep inner pain that you're going through? And then also, you will realize that every so often, certain things, even after that small pain, there will, other, there will be other things in your life that happen to you and you're saying, God, not again, not again. I thought we are over this thing. We are over this one as well. So how do we move forward? And my lesson from this whole experience was that once we have community around you, once you purpose to continue to heal and grow and walk in the purpose that God has destined for you to walk in on this earth, then it becomes easier because every single day is an opportunity for you to heal. It's an opportunity for you to grow. It's an opportunity for you to bless someone else. It's an opportunity for you to, to love others and you love others through using your gifts and now for me i have realized that one of my gifts is to encourage even when it is made painful because as you encourage sometimes you find yourself sharing a story that brings back pain and yet you wouldn't want to 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 break down before that call that you're encouraging but if that is your calling then you will step into it and purpose to do just that yeah so, yes, brings us back to what healing looks like. Healing means you purpose to heal. So every day you choose to heal. But as you're healing, you realize that everyone is dealing with something. They are dealing with something and it's not just you. Everyone has a struggle they are dealing with. So how do you empathize and encourage them? Then you have to accept that, yes, <laughs> you have to accept that yes i need to heal so be aware and when you realize that this thing is a trigger for me or it's going to make me cry you figure out how to deal with it but it takes time like now in the moment i didn't realize that it was going to happen and oh, the tears were down there but they were already there there was nothing i was going to do about it then you choose to learn from others. This is why I'm here with Diana and Lillian. I am learning from them and they are learning from me. But most importantly, you want to learn from others as well. Leave love on them as well. But this also requires you to be intentional about it because anything in life to be achieved, you have to be intentional about it. Don't procrastinate. Say, I'm going to do it and be intentional about doing it. Then most importantly for the community, be willing to, to nurture, be plugged in because sometimes people will come and want to help you and you will not accept the help, but you need to be willing to do what? To accept the help. Nurture the relationships and be yourself. Then most importantly, allow yourself to grow allow yourself to go and it is gradual yeah that's it from me if you have any questions kindly feel free to share the questions okay so there are some other slides that i had not uh addressed but uh yes so being self-aware means there are some truths that are going to be revealed about us and facing them is vital to our growth so yeah that's a quote from there but i already talked about it Lillian, you can go ahead if there's anything else you need me to capture from the presentation 
or we can end here. I believe I've covered everything in detail, apart from one last quote, maybe. Um, on how on how long healing takes. So I'll just read it out for you. Okay, it's right here. So who can say how long healing takes? Sometimes we only see far enough ahead for the next step. And then the one after that. What matters most is that you're in motion, aware and intentional, headed in the right direction. No longer the person you once were on a journey of discovering who you will, who you will be. So it is a journey. All this I have already captured in the presentation. The most important thing is you, one, understanding that there is something that I need to heal from. But that takes self-awareness and introspection. And secondly, being intentional to pursue healing and understanding that healing takes time and it is gradual and it is a journey. It's not a marathon. Don't rush it. Be yourself. Take as much time as it needs for you to heal. Yeah, so thank you for listening. Please share any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fortunate, for sharing your story. The ladies are in the chat. You can have time to run through loving on you and sharing how encouraging it has been. Thank you so much. And thank you for, for enabling us to see the light of the importance of healing, the importance of finding your story and telling your story. And uh, I would like, ladies, if anyone has a question, please either type it in the chat or put up your hand or speak. Unmute and speak. We'll take about, we said a quarter past. So we'll take 15 minutes for our discussion and then we shall wrap it up. So let's have our ladies. Uh, I'll have a question for you, Fortunate, as the others go. Through this whole journey, did you get um, professional help and where is the role for professional help in terms of finding the answers to your healing? We can't hear you, Fortunate. Can you hear me now? Yeah, so I was saying that, yes, I did seek professional help. My only challenge with that was that I was looking for something particular. So actually, I would tell the lady listening to be open-minded when they are seeking help. Now. When I was looking for help in this particular issue of losing my daughter, I was looking for, they kept sending me to particular groups. I know you've had so many groups about people who help others who have gone through loss. Now, I was looking for someone who had gone through my kind of loss. I was not looking for someone who has just gone through loss anyhow. Of let's say, I know all loss is, uh, is important, is very painful, but because of who I am, I was looking for someone who had gone through a similar experience. You have had a child after having a child, and meanwhile, you've been dealing with something. So after having this child, you have lived with them for two years and 11 months, and then after that, the child just goes. That's the person I was looking for. Now, I also tried um, normal therapy. I did... Uh, at my workplace, they offer an employee assistance program. And I was connected to a therapist. Now, even that particular therapist that I dealt with, I was looking for something particular. Now, whether it was helpful or not, I think that is beyond the scope of what you've asked. But yes, I did seek help. But now to the lady listening to me, I would say, as you're seeking help, be open-minded, listen, build the community, and then you'll figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. 
Thank you, Fortunate. Any other questions from the ladies? Please feel free to unmute and ask your question. Or clarifications or any additions that you feel would be um, support for, for the ladies here. For those that came in late, we are having a Women's Rights Series where we started our planning in the month of April, May, we talked on health, how to live authentically healthy, defining authentic health, and now we are dealing with healing. And the three of these are supposed to culminate into a branch, a women's branch, where we shall embrace the whole token of, of woman thrive. So we are empowering each other to thrive in our being a woman. And today mainly it is dealing with your story. So any questions from the audience? Moses, do you have a question or did you admit by mistake? Bella, do you have a question? I would like to thank the presenter. Uh, she has been very courageous. She has been a special woman. She has been able to encourage many of us that have gone through a grieving process without any support or direction. And somehow we've had through, but uh, the fact that she was able to open up and share with us, it's part of the healing process. And like she encouraged us that it's a journey and everyone has their own mark when they reach and say they have recovered or they feel better or they have uh, great memories of their dear ones. So we've been encouraged and it's never easy, but thank you so much for starting such an initiative to reach out to all of us that usually don't have direction or support. I lost a nephew a year ago and it had been tough. Every day this picture would come to me and I would be thinking, what if we had done this? What if we had done that? But like she said, it's God who is in charge. And like she said, we need a community of support of great women like you that have started such an initiative to remind us and to bring us together and to keep us hoping for better. Thank you so much. I've been inspired. And thank you for being strong, fortunate, for sharing with us your special story and keep strong and keep inspiring many other women. Many of us are outside there with, without such a, a message and encouragement. Be blessed. Mm -hmm. Bless you too. If you have any questions, you can also send in the private chat maybe to Lillian. And then she will read them out. I've just seen an interesting comment in the in the chat. Someone said that my name literally means thanking poverty. Though I'm brilliant, hardworking, and I have excelled in all I do. Now I wanted to just say that you're not your name, yeah. And your name shouldn't define you. I don't know how many of you here are Christians and have heard of the story of Jabez. Has anyone heard about it? Well, if you have, you know that I think the name Jabez also had a different meaning. But this gentleman decided that, now I think the mother had them through a lot of pain. And that is what Jabez means. Someone, Lillian, if you could kindly help me check as I, as I talk. So this gentleman decided that they would not be defined by what that name said or by what their mother had called them. And they said that they would go ahead and pray that they will be blessed beyond measure, that they will 
that God would enlarge their territories because they believed that they could do much more than what their name meant. So I wanted to just say that the name does not in itself define who we are. At the end of the day, once you have figured out what that one thing is that you do not necessarily relate with, then you let go of it and you build your life and yourself in a way that you want to be known for or defined for. So basically, you live your authentic life, your authentic self, your best version of yourself by being something more than what your name says. I hope I hope that makes sense. So that is for you, Emily. Yes, I was trying to run through the comments. I don't know if um, Lillian, have you received any questions that I need to address? Give me a moment, let me run through and then I see. Um, someone is saying there are things that she takes for granted as a man, but she's got the difference being here today. Thank you so much for that comment and we appreciate that. Someone is asking privately, do these types of healing apply with things to do with infidelity and the pain from unfaithfulness and betrayal? Did you hear that? Yes, I hear that. Now, everything starts with you. You know, they say... Ladies, thank you so much for muted. Ladies, we're getting feedback. Rebecca, Beth Lida, please thank you. Go on, thank you. Okay, so I was saying that in life, and it's quite unfortunate, but I hope we can this we can share this more at, at the branch if you're able to make it. The, the interesting thing about life is that there are certain things that we are not prepared for before we get married or before we get into adulthood. Adulting is actually very real. Now, issues to do with infidelity, issues to do with a cheating spouse, issues to do with being battered, that's domestic violence, issues to be to deal with um, mistreatment, all those are issues that can be healed from. But these are also issues that we were not prepared for as we were growing up. So as we grow, we begin to learn how to navigate them. Now, navigating them is a personal choice. If you attended our last webinar, Lillian mentioned that some of these things that bring us disease come from our experiences, including depression out of uh, a cheating spouse or overthinking it because, well, it is happening, so I have to overthink it. And as you're overthinking it, you get stressed. And as you get stressed, you stop eating. And as you stop eating, so many other things happen. But these are all things as a person you can purpose to deal and heal from. But for you to do that, mostly you need community. You need God, yeah? Because there are certain questions that we are not able to ask in public. There are certain things you are not able to tell some friend because of how they perceive us because of how we perceive our spouses, but we know that nobody does life alone. We all do life with community. You cannot, you can't, you can't live as an island because they say that the life, the business of, of uh, business is about relationships, but then also the life general is about connection. We live by connecting with others. And through connecting with others, we get to heal certain things that we would ideally not heal from because they are deep rooted within our hearts. We don't have anyone to discuss with. We don't have anyone to consult. We don't have anyone to help us as a couple. So it could even be that you need therapy or you need to deal with yourself first because I've done a marriage, a marriage counseling before where they say that you pray for your spouse 
and work on yourself. Now working on yourself is take care of you, self-care, self-love, authentic health. Do everything that makes you happy and pray for your person to deal with themselves or for God to partner with you to deal with that particular problem because certain things are way beyond you and you can only do so much. I hope that addresses your, your question. Thank you, Fortunate. Thank you, ladies. Um, I think we've come to the end. It's almost quarter past seven. Um, I hope Diana can be able to talk through the next step. We are, thank you so much, ladies. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you, Carol. Carol has helped you, Fortunate, to display the story of Jabez. So, ladies, those who came in late, we've been going through a journey where we are empowering women to thrive. So the three ladies that have been taking us through this are Diana, who started us on planning at the end of April. Then um, myself, Dr. Lillian, I took us through authentic health for a woman. Don't forget the theme is women thrive. How do we thrive as women? We plan our lives, we plan our health. And now we're talking about healing because each and every one of us ladies has a story. And because we've not gone through the processes of healing, these stories have made us less of who we can be to thrive. So I'll ask Diana, I hope your network will allow you to run us through the last steps that we are asking the ladies to do. We are making a call to you that, okay, if you've appreciated the need for planning your life, the need for living a healthy life, the need for grasping and making feeling tangible. What do I do after this? Over to you, Diana. Thank you so much for tonight. Can you hear me? Now I can. Now I can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay, my network has been really bad today, but just to share with you um, the next steps from here. As Lillian said, in the last three months, we've um, endeavored to support as men and taking care of their health, but even most importantly, or very importantly, planning their life. Those are the three sessions that we've been having for the three months. Um, so what next from here? would really want to continue to work with each one of you that would need support, either in healing or in planning your life. Or in authentic health. We'll have a physical meetup on the 30th of July. It's going to be a brunch. Um, it will be in the morning uh, from 9 a.m. and will be done by 1 p.m. Um, so that's the Women Thrive Branch. And during this branch, you'll have an opportunity to hear more in the different areas, uh, in planning, in health, um, and in, in uh, healing as well. So please sign up. We're going to share a link in the group where you can sign up, not only for the branch, but to sign up um, to join smaller groups. So we'll have smaller WhatsApp groups on planning, on health, and in, on healing. You can join one of the groups or you can join whichever group, um, you know, you would fit in tips and support uh, facilitated by Lillian, Fortunate, and myself. So we'll share that link in a group. Please feel free to um, click the link. The link is a registration link, which enables us to get your contact details and assign you to a particular WhatsApp group if you'd like to join a WhatsApp group. If you wouldn't want to join, the, please also just tick that you're interested in it and we'll contact you. In addition to the branch in July, uh, we will be having uh, a Women Thrive Retreat where we will get our um, from aerobics, from uh, people speaking to us about diet and health, 
and just relax in a very um, in a very serene environment. So if you're interested in the women's retreat, please also contact us, send us a message, um, and we will involve you in that retreat. Otherwise, in the meantime, you can follow each and each of us on our individual pages. As we had shared earlier, we are three organizations that have got together, um, Phenomenal Women Global, and those are our social media pages. Um, we are on, on all the social media pages. You can look for Phenomenal Women Global on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube. This video will also be shared on YouTube. Um, and uh, we do women, we do mentoring for women as well as conferences. Um, you can also contact me for the planning in particular. Then we have Lillian, who is Hope um, Healing sorry hope health and healing h3 those are her social media pages you can contact her individually if you'd like to know more about healing and authentic health in particular and then we have fortunate farm and those are social media uh, pages Sorry, I think as long as you registered, we'll share the PowerPoint and, uh, and the, the video as well. So that's all from me, just to encourage you to please fill in the link. Um, Lillian, have you shared it? Yes, okay. it's shared. The, yes. the link for, for, the, for the Thrive, yes. So yeah, please click thrive. the link, the Women Thrive group, and it will enable us to get information about whether you want to attend the conference um, or whether you want to join the WhatsApp groups. As we said, we're very keen on supporting women, um, on encouraging women to ensure that we're all performing at our best. So thank you very much. And uh, bye from me, over to you, Lillian, to, to wrap up. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Diana. We, we are grateful that your network behaved. And thank you for making the time to be here with the ladies. Ladies, I wish I had time to thank each one of you. But that might not be possible. Allow fortunate Diana and myself to say thank you so much for making the time to be here. We have learned in our meeting that gratitude is part of healing. And fortunate said it so well. We're grateful for each other that we've been able to come together because of our stories. And we don't want to leave it at us. We want to support another woman that you can thrive in whatever case or whatever life has thrown at you. So there's the link. Please register. Invite your friends. We don't want to miss it. And we're going to share the details. Um, the date is 30th July. It will be in Kampala. For those that are not able to join us in Kampala, unfortunately, um, we shall miss you, but we shall share on our socials all the details. So that's it from me. Thank you, ladies. Have a good evening. Have a good evening, ladies. Bye-bye, ladies. Thank you. Then I can end the call.